this is Jennifer Grant. I am the author of A Little Blue Bottle, and I am here today with the wonderful illustrator, Jillian Whiting, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about our process and about the book, and we're both just sort of leading up to the week's uh, week of its release and really excited to introduce it to you. Hi, I'm Jillian. I'm really excited to have illustrated this book and to be able to sit down and talk about it with Jen. It's been a great experience. Um, and so yeah, I guess we'll just get started. I graduated from Syracuse University just a few months ago with my BFA um, in illustration. It was a very busy year, um, but I was so excited to be able to work on this project on top of all of my schoolwork. My professors were actually really great about um, giving me the space and time and the resources to help me finish this book too. So it kind of worked its way into um, my curriculum as well. So it was, it was a really cool way to uh, be able to sort of send myself off into the world um, with this book. So. You did such a beautiful job. Thank you. Thank you. I would love to know uh, where you got the idea for this book and where your inspiration to make a book for children um, dealing with grief came from. Um, well, in uh, 2012, as you will remember, um, there was the just awful tragedy of the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting and 20 kids, 26 people, but 20 kids who were six and seven years old died um, in their school. And I have a good friend who lives in that part of Connecticut, and she had kids the same ages as those children who were murdered. And, you know, I kind of, we talked a lot during that period of time because she was going to um, a lot of funerals with her children and talking to them about death and about their grief. And I mean, it was just unthinkable. And I, um, one of the things I asked her during that time was whether there were good picture books for kids because her kids were definitely in the picture book um, category as readers. And she had not really found things that she felt kind of addressed grief in a, in a matter of fact and yet a nurturing way. And so that's just something we talked about a lot um, those years ago. And so it was on my mind that I would love someday to write a book that um, parents could read to their children or teachers could read to a child who is experiencing grief. Obviously, our book doesn't have to do with a mass shooting. You know, it has to do with the loss of a loved neighbor. But I just thought it would be um, a wonderful thing to be able to give a child the permission to grieve and to sit with their feelings and not not try to kind of gloss over them or tell them that they should feel um, any feeling at all, just to let them um, really be with their grief. And so that was sort of the emotional context of this book. All right, I have another question for you, and that is, um, what was your favorite spread once the book was finished and you look at it and you just think, oh my goodness, this is, this is my favorite mm -hmm. one? Yes, so it's actually torn between two of the different spreads that I did. Um, uh, they were the ones that I, well, one of them was one that I enjoyed working on the most. And so it's my favorite because um, it just felt right as I was doing it. And the second one is my favorite because it was very hard <laughs> to finish. And, uh, just like make myself feel happy with it. But once I did, um, it became one of my favorites. So the first one is the spread that has... Um, Mrs. Wednesday's daughter carrying the cat mm -hmm. um, I too. and sort of like collage on top and then the brushwork on bottom. Um, it just, it felt really good to draw both of the characters out in that one. It was very, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It, it just went very smoothly. I really got into it and it was, it was very relaxing to paint them. And I just feel like the, colors I used in the composition um, did what I what I wanted it to. I felt I felt very happy with how that came out. And it came out smoothly. There were no big bumps. And then the second one that I love a lot is where um, the girl and her mom are sitting on the porch, mm -hmm. sort of uh, with the sunset almost behind them. Um, and the mom is just sort of letting the little girl feel what she's feeling. Um, so 
that scene was really hard for me to figure out how I wanted to display it because it felt like a very quiet scene and scene that was really full of emotion at the same time. So um, I thought that showing their backs and sort of almost the silhouette and a very simple um, gesture of where the porch was and where the trees were, were a good way to sort of let the, um, the audience put themselves in the places of those characters um, and really tell the story more with the color and the mood than like the, the faces of the um, characters themselves. And the, the body language became really important then too. So um, yes, but that one was hard to figure out, but now I really like it. Yeah. So. I love yeah. the colors and for everyone who now knows the book or as you see it, you'll notice um, there are certain colors that are repeated. There's sort of, you know, do you want to talk about that? The colors that you chose and why? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So I knew from the start, I think we both knew that blue was going to be a really important color um, because of the name of the book, Little Blue Bottle, and just sort of the importance I think that blue has with the feeling of sadness and grief. Um, so that is definitely a motive throughout the book. Um, but I also made a very intentional effort to include other bright colors as well because um, grief isn't something that's necessarily just sad or just dark and, and you don't feel blue all the time. You feel a million different ways. Um, and so by including all of the bright colors that I did and sort of the uh, unrealistic tones, like most of the, most of the paintings don't reflect how you might see a person in real life. I know there's one where both of the characters are in blue or there are bright collage pieces. Um, I wanted to sort of touch on how grief and loss can make the world feel kind of surreal also. So I wanted it to look like um, yeah, like maybe a world that this character would be existing in now, like that was different, not quite the same. Yeah. I love that. I think that's, it's so effective. And the, the page where she's remembering living next door to Mrs. Wednesday, and those mm -hmm. are blue, and she's riding her bike and Mrs. Wednesday's waving to her mm -hmm. on the porch, I think. I love that. And it does have yeah. that surreal and also that, um, otherworldly feeling we get sometimes when we're really lost in a memory. And mm -hmm. so I think you did that really effectively. That's really cool. So um, I'm so excited for this book to get out into the world. And again, I'm so grateful to you for having brought it to life. I mean, it's such a true thing with picture books that the illustrator is telling the story just as loudly, if not more loudly than the, the writer, because for the audience of the kids reading it, some of them won't be able to read words at all. They'll only be connecting with uh, the pictures and the few words that maybe they understand, depending on their ages and so on. So I feel really honored that you did this beautiful work and I know people are gonna love it. Um, do you wanna talk about, well, and also I'm happy to announce to anyone who's watching that we're gonna be collaborating on another project. And so I feel really grateful for that as well, also with the same publishing house, with Church Publishing Group. So we are both excited about that as well. Um, and do you wanna talk about your website or ways that people could connect with you yeah. online? Absolutely, I mean, well, first I wanna thank you back for just giving me the beautiful story that you did and trusting me to um, bring it to life and make it an actual, an actual book, which is so exciting. Um, yeah, but if anybody wants to find me, uh, I have a website, which is jillianwhiting.com, uh, G-I-L-L-I-A-N-W-H-I-T-I-N-G.com, and then uh, Jillian Whiting Art uh, on Instagram. So, Awesome. Okay, so everyone follow Jillian and check out her website, and you can find me at jennifergrant.com, and uh, it's been fun talking with everyone today. I hope... I hope you are well wherever you are. Bye.